Good morning. It is Monday morning and it is quarter after eight. I got up at uh, quarter to eight. And this is my breakfast today. It's another one of those eggs I, I spoke about in my last video. Uh, a white bagel, half of a white bagel. I split it with Chris this morning. And our, whoop, our power juice here, which really isn't a power juice. It's everything that I had left over from the produce box that I needed to use up before, uh, before they went bad. So there's peach, pear, carrot, ginger, persimmon, and I think that's it actually. It's really, really good. Okay, I want to eat and then we'll have our weekly chat. Good morning. It is Monday morning, bright and early. Oh, 9.30. Um, so, week, week three. And week three has been a, a pretty quiet week, actually. Um, <clears throat> haven't done much. I, I made juice. That, that, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I've, I've spent the week uh, just recovering more or less uh, from, you know, necro. I had some con gunk. It just, it wasn't pleasant. Um, that I'm just now getting, you know, getting over. Um, I did pause our produce box because, oh my god, the amount of food we were getting every week was just ridiculous. So... Um, I'm going to be adjusting our produce box subscription uh, next week when Roger gets paid. And, uh, you know, and, and we'll, we'll muddle along, I think. I think every other week is, is better than every week. And, and maybe scaling down the size of the box. Because, you know, two medium boxes every week was a lot of food. Um, what else? Well, there was an article yesterday, I kind of ranted on my Facebook a bit, about uh, bullying. Um, that uh, we need to redefine the term bullying because it's being misused. That if a child is, is harassed once or twice, then it's not bullying. And I think that's a dangerous assumption to take as somebody who was bullied the majority of her school career. Um, I mean, the bullying started in first grade, first, second grade, and it didn't stop until um, probably freshman year of high school, maybe sophomore. Um, and that was just because everybody had other shit to do. We didn't have time to bully each other and, you know, whatever. But it wasn't that the, the, the people who bullied me um, bullied me every day non-stop. I mean, I hated going to school um, because if it wasn't because I got caught picking my nose in kindergarten and so I was teased non-stop you know, throughout my elementary school years as a nose picker. Um, you know, nobody was my friend in, in elementary school. I didn't have anybody really to hang out with. Um, and you know, it's it's not like they each person daily got to me. It was usually one or two people every other day, nonstop. But then when we hit junior high, it was just, you know, the same girls who picked on everybody. It wasn't just one person every day. It was a lot of people a couple times a week. So yeah, bullying doesn't have to be every single day to the point of, you know, physical harassment. It can just be snide remarks on a bus once an afternoon, you know, and it's usually not just one person those people are picking on. It's, it's usually a lot of people they're picking on. And so to, to reduce the severity of what bullying is and trying to isolate the, the term and define it, it's ridiculous. It's like trying to define rape, you know, by sitting there and saying that rape is just forceful sex and and that removes so many shades of gray and and to do that is just it's wrong to the victims to the victims of bullying to the victims of rape you don't do that it's the victims who define what it is not the aggressors 
and I was bullied. <laughs> you know, I distinctly remember, my mother will even retell the tale sometimes of when I came home in the middle of seventh grade sobbing because every kid on the bus stop was basically cheering on these two girls who you know, typically got off at two different bus stops than me, but who got off at my bus stop to pick on me and shove me and kick me. And yet when I went and my mother went to the school because it happened at the school bus, therefore it's school property. And my mother went and complained to the, the vice principal at the time. So whoever was the, I can't remember her name, but the female vice principal of Oak Grove Elementary in like 1993, I think. I don't remember her name, but she, ooh, I have a bone to pick with you. She sat all three of us down, the two aggressors and me, all of our parents, and informed my mother that I had to have instigated the, the confrontation because the other girls and their mother say, oh, their kids would never do that. I had to have instigated it. I had to have asked to be pushed and yelled at and, and, and kicked. And that if I did it again, not only would the two girls be suspended from school, but I would too. So there created that mentality that the teachers and the school itself were not there to protect me. They weren't there for me. And the fact that they would threaten me with suspension because I had been harassed and I had been assaulted is, you know, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that sent the message to, to Angela and Heather that they had the absolute right to do this to anybody they wanted to. And that's just, that's, that's not a great way. That's not a good message. It's not a good message to the victim. It's not a good message to the aggressors because those kids grow up to be the assholes who really, really hurt people in life. <laughs> so, no, we do not need to redefine bullying to systematic abuse, systematic uh, harassment. That is not what bullying is. It should not be what bullying is. Um, and no, I, I completely disagree, and I disagree with the, the expert experts who say that's what it should be, because it's not. It's not. And, and from somebody who has been bullied, who was bullied for years and years and years, don't do it. Okay, just don't. Punish the people early on and teach them that it's not right to do that. That, that they are causing irreparable harm to somebody else. Because it's, it's that daily environment. It doesn't have to be one person. It has to be in the environment. When the, the kids do it to me and the teachers turn a blind eye and the principal and the vice principals just shrug their shoulders, it means that you have nowhere to go and no child should ever have nowhere to go. So there's my rant on bullying. <laughs> um, wait, I, <laughs> I've been terrible. I, I was terrible. So I've actually only lost about another pound to two pounds in the last three weeks, which, you know, net loss, good. Um, but between necro and, and, you know, the crap food we've been eating recently, you know, fast food, and, and uh, we got some croissants from Sam's Club, and Chris and I kind of devoured those. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm glad I lost some weight, but I should have lost more. And, uh, and yeah, so just, just a little bit. I know what I did wrong. I know what needs to be fixed, um, before, you know, next time. And, and we're going to try, we're going to try, but Hey, still losing, um, almost down 40 pounds. So I think it's pretty good. 40 pounds since, since about May, April or May. It's not bad. Um, Halloween is coming up. Uh, Halloween is this week. And uh, this is my first Halloween in a house. I, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Uh, last night, Chris, Roger, and I went outside and started setting up some decorations. We have tombstones out in the front yard, some skeletons, and uh, tonight... And put out the rest of the stuff, and it'll be fun. I, I'm so excited. I'm going to take lots of pictures, pictures, and uh, and then of course, you know, a couple of days later, we're going to take it all down, and then uh, I'm going to start.
buying Christmas decorations. Again, never had a house do this with my other than my parents' house, but they got to do the decorating. I didn't. Um, so I'm going to deck the hell out of my halls. Uh, Chris keeps rolling her eyes, but it's it's important to me. This is my first house. This is my first standalone home where I don't have to worry about neighbors. I don't have to worry about people stealing my shit because, you know, I live in a bad area. I live in a really nice area, in a beautiful neighborhood, in a lovely home, and I want to decorate it, damn it. <laughs> so there's going to be lights outside. I'm going to buy some things for the yard. I have these big Christmas balls we're going to hang from the trees. And and uh, inside the house, it's, it's, it's going to be sparkly. <laughs> Um, I had to be careful what we get and where we put it because we do have cats and and the kittles are the little kittles. Hang on, I'll show you a kittle. This is a kittle. This is a kittle. This is a little Dorian. Hi, kittle. He's our youngest, and I adore him. But he's a kittle, and um, and the kittles like to pull down uh, Dorian and Basil. They like to pull down Christmas balls and tug on garland and, you know, do all sorts of crap with our, our stuff. So we have to get stuff that won't hurt them if they eat them or won't shatter if they pull them down and kick them about the kitchen. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm going to definitely take a lot of pictures. And uh, as soon as Thanksgiving passes, Christmas. <laughs> so this is also the first year I'm going to hold my own Christmas party, too that I'm really, really excited about. So yeah, this is my favorite time of the year and you're gonna see a lot of videos about how much fun I have. And I may even make some videos about, you know, um, the, the Christmas baking I do, Thanksgiving stuff I make, um, definitely about decorations. Um, I make my own Christmas cards, so I'll probably do something about that. I'm very crafty. I may even go through some stuff uh, in the craft room with you guys so that anybody interested can see what I do. But week three down and uh, yeah, have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys next week.